Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. Today, we are excited to welcome a remarkable guest, Lucy Stewart, the Associate Curator of Education from the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh. She's here to share a remarkable new program that the museum is offering called Mindful Museum. Welcome, Lucy. Thank you, Lance. I'm very happy to be with you today. Wonderful. So the museum has a just a remarkable new program for people over the age of 55 called the Mindful Museum. And we're excited to talk about that today and share the wonderful things that this program is offering uh, visitors. I, I am happy to share this with you. This has been a lifelong dream, and I feel like my entire um, relationship with this museum, which I've been very fortunate to have a lot, a lifelong learning opportunity with this museum, has culminated in this program. And so I started taking classes as a kid at this museum. I've now worked here for going on 27 years now. Wow. And I just am so thrilled with the benefit of lifelong learning. And I want to share that with everybody. Fantastic. So Lucy, let's, let's go through what the Mindful Museum programming includes. Um, I know you have um, an art pathways or art paths. Share with us what the art paths are about. Yes. Art paths are the combination of walking or rolling paths through the museum that take you to different works of art, depending on how far you want to go. So if you wanna count steps, I've already done that for you. And then at each work of art in the art path is a meditation that you can either listen to on your phone or you can read it, I've printed them out. Um, And so if a smartphone is not something for you and a QR code is not something for you, Uh, then you can also read it. So it's an opportunity to sit uh, with a work of art for a longer period of time and become immersed in that work of art. And art immersion around this program is important. Um, uh, So this, the combination is how this comes together in art paths. Currently there are six of them. I'm continuing to develop more. So if you want to go a half a mile in the museum, or if you want to go a quarter of a mile in the museum, there's ways to do that creatively. This also comes from my walking the museum uh, as a staff member and and starting to understand the steps that can happen in this museum and then surrounding yourself with art as as you go about that. So people who maybe walk on a daily basis or who go to the mall to walk, this is this can be the mall. <laughs> I was going to say it's going to be a lot more educational and probably interactive than doing your typical mall walking. Right. So the the Mindful Museum program actually launched this month in May and you're on is this the second week it's been open? We just did the second week. We're heading into the third week. Yes. What uh, what's some of the feedback maybe you've heard or have been given about the program so far? It has been incredibly positive. We have about 100 people who have signed up, which is beautiful. We open the museum early for this group on Wednesday mornings. However, it's also reaches people from far and wide as your part as your podcast does, because there are online components to it as well. And it it just there hasn't been something like that like this here, uh, where you can have a membership. It's a one-time registration fee. And it's sort of like when you join the Y and you show up in the Y and sometimes you ride the bike and sometimes you go in the pool. So you can drop into drawing. We have chair yoga on various days. And so it really brings together what I think is so important for creative aging 
is the social and physical and cognitive connections amongst these, the way that these programs come together to give, to provide that. Absolutely. And I would just add to that with, you know, dealing with families that we deal with, with physical limitations, some inactivity, as well as, you know, cognitive um, health issues that they may be facing and dealing with. And then on top of that, then you add in the COVID restrictions and isolation. You know, this program couldn't have come at a better time for for people 55 and older because it's helping them to re-engage, get active again. And I think almost, I call it having a purpose. You know, if you don't have anywhere to go the next day, you just don't have that motivation or that esteem to really get up and get moving maybe necessarily. And now, you know, the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh is offering this, really it's a worldwide program because you can do things online if you can't necessarily attend in person, but you're really hitting on, and we're gonna go through them, but you're really hitting on all the key components to help people age health and uh, mind, body, and spirit. You know, and I think it's remarkable, and I'm sure it even brings a more significant meaning to you growing up and, you know, spending your uh, life so far with the museum, but also bringing this to fruition. You know, you had this concept, and you may have borrowed some ideas, but, you know, you're now launching this, and it's just, it's truly a remarkable program. Thank you. I, I really appreciate your words. I, um, I'm also in the age range now <laughs> for whom this serves, and I see a great need. Um, and there has been calls to action uh, from places like the American Alliance of Museums, AAM, have done some incredible research on, um, on seniors being underserved in museum communities. Uh, that might be surprising to people because very often it seems like, you know, people in their senior ages are the people that go to museums. But in fact, what is there for him for them when they arrive? And I truly believe, um, because I have had this lifelong relationship with art, that art is a catalyst for health wellness, well-being, and healing. Yeah. And in for most of my museum career, I planned exhibition programs. So a number of programs with artists and writers and architects and you know lectures and hands-on activities and that kind of thing. And then in 2017, I took over a program that we've been doing since 2008 called In the Moment, which is a tour style program for people uh, living with Alzheimer's and dementia, primarily in facilities. And that program, which has been very successful and is a wonderful and beautiful program and started based on Museum of Modern Arts Meet Me program in New York. They came in 2008 and trained us to be able to, to do this program. Um, and I learned much from taking over that program and the way that we conduct our tours is very conversational. It is just learning from the people that we're talking with what it is that they see in a work of art or how a work of art responds to them. We always say that you don't need an art history background to visit a museum. Everything you need is, is within yourself. And these uh, kind of tours really help people do that. And so within these tours, um, the conversational part of it, the socialization part of it really also helped to inform this program. And I wanted it to, to be for all. Um, so this has a lot of components of that. And then my lifelong learning and my study around these various groups of ages over 55. Uh, we had a wonderful gentleman arrive whose wife was recently diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And so he comes with her and they walk the museum and they do what they feel most comfortable doing in this space. And so the socialization is very important, but also the care partner is very important too. And we right. wanna care for the care partner. Yes. And that's equally as important. And they can come and they can share it um, and they can share the experience. It's the same thing that we do with facilities who bring a group of people. The care partners are also important. And in that moment, in the moment, which is why it's called in the moment, you know, everyone is, is equal in, in that, whether it's 
you know, not people who are nonverbal, people who are verbal, people who are non-mobile. And so we really try to foster that kind of uh, reaction. I, and I think that's fascinating. And I, you know, you had touched on something that I want to elaborate on quickly, where you said you found in the museum industry, there's not a lot of stuff geared towards seniors. And, but I think you could apply that almost across the board to almost anything that applies. A lot of, I don't want to say all of society, but a lot of societal activities, industries, and it, seniors are almost an afterthought. You know, uh, they say television is targeted to, you know, the 17 to 35 year olds. And, you know, everything is a, a younger demographic. So there's not that, there's not that push or that provision provided for the senior population when, you know, in reality, the baby boomers are the largest part of our society and it just continues to grow daily. And that's going to lead to this question. And this is something, you know, you and I had spoke about originally when we first met the, the accommodations you're also making are kind of the first of the kind for the museum as well, where if somebody's listening or watching this and they say, well, you know, my wife has to use a walker or a cane and the art paths might just be too much for her to bear. You're also, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lucy, you're providing chairs at the exhibits for people to sit at. So each station, they can sit down and, you know, recover, relax, or take a break if they need to. And that is so... There's a few things I like to comment on on your kind words around that. Um, having said all of that, there's amazing work being done through museums across the country, and um, and and in Canada uh, for senior populations. And so, um, trying to learn from my colleagues across the country as well, incorporating things that I feel work best here in, with our population. Um, the Fry Museum, for instance, has an entire department dedicated to creative aging. They've done incredible work. There are so many places who have just incredible programs for seniors. What I wanted to create was a long sustainable program that, so this program, this pilot year is eight months that people can drop in and out on Wednesdays uh, for an entire eight month period. And we're hoping to, to learn from that. The chairs, interestingly, which sounds like a very, very simple thing is something that I learned when I, when I took over the in the moment program um, is by providing the chairs at the works of art, it immediately helped people to focus, right? Because then you're not worrying about your body and what your body is doing. And so immediately people can sit and relax and focus. And galleries are often vast spaces that, you know, that you can walk through, but where, where do you rest and where do you have that respite? And so I've incorporated those in front of works of art, which I feel is incredibly important for anybody. Right. So I, I recently in these past two weeks, also took pictures of just the, you know, general public appreciating the chairs in front of the works of art, because you will sit down and you will look longer and, and have the chance to be with that work of art. And so that's the incorporation of, of the chairs. Again, it sounds so simple, but it's big difference. Yeah. So the art paths are all day on Wednesdays. And then you have, and you touched on this briefly, then you also are offering drop-in drawings, which are on the third, the first and third Wednesdays of the month, and that's between nine thirty and eleven. Um, do you want to expand on the drop-in drawing? Sure, drop-in drawing again on the first and third Wednesdays. For right now, um, it's been the first week was incredibly popular. It may end up that I add sessions. However, right now, that's where it is. It's going to be in a different location each time. And we'll have a variety of teachers to give kind of a variety of perspectives uh, over the course. You can use that session if you're, if you're already someone who is very adept at drawing, that session can support your ongoing interest in, in drawing. We had a number of people join in who hadn't drawn before. We had people join in who took classes as kids, as, as I did here. Wonderful. And who, yeah, who have recently 
discovered that they'd like to re-engage creatively. So they might have had that experience as a kid and now they're finding themselves, you know, post-retirement and they want to re-engage in that way. And um, so again, it's it's drop in and out if if you like. You can stay the entire time or if you want to go off and do something else, it's perfectly fine too. But it it moves every single time. So um, this first one, we did some drawing that would go along with music, being inspired by music. We try to be inspired by our galleries and works on view. And, um, and then the second and fourth Wednesdays, which you'll probably mention is chair yoga. Given the overwhelming response to that, um, I had already added even before the first class, a second session. So now we have that. 9.30 to 10.10 and then 10.15 to, you know, the next half hour, which is a half hour of low impact yoga using the chair for balance and inspired by a work of art. All the movements are always inspired by a work of art on view. Well, and I was going to mention the, uh, the chair and wheelchair yoga, because I know from our experiences at various senior centers and gyms that, you know, that is such a popular class or course that seniors and those needing uh, chairs or a wheelchair for to yoga, it's one of the most popular activities and classes that they offer because how many times we encounter somebody and you know they may have a certain limitation or restriction and they feel like, well, I can't, I can't go for a walk. I can't, you know, there's certain things they're not able to do. And coming up with this creativity of doing it in the chair or wheelchair, it just offers them the, the ability to take part in it and to stay active. So I just, I think that's such a wonderful benefit for people. And it can be as strenuous as you would like it to be. So we certainly do have people who are, you know, very, very able body um, to be able to uh, incorporate additional movement. And so the person that we have leading it can also, also gives um, kind of options. You know, if you are in a wheelchair, instead of doing this, you'll do this. And uh, so it's really open for such a wide range. We have some people who have some sight challenges mm -hmm. or, you know, standing and doing yoga is just not possible. And so staying in the chair um, with the, you know, guide dog and, and that is, is really comfortable. And we do that in our hall of architecture. So it's a big, wide open space. And, um, and then I, I give out repro you know, reproductions of the work that we're talking about. Oh, wow. And then people can go to the galleries and see that work in, in person. Wonderful. Um, yeah. The Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh, I was doing some research for our, um, for our talk today. And it doesn't sound like it's definitively the oldest museum in America, but they say it's considered possibly the oldest. What's the distinction there? Um, it, it, it's not the oldest, but I will tell you what is interesting about the way the collection has been built. Andrew Carnegie was not a collector. So he built a building and then figured out a way to fill it with art. <laughs> and okay. So he instituted the Carnegie International, which we still do. And so 1896, the first building opened in 1895, and in 1896 was the first Carnegie International. And that's how the collection has been built, which is very different than, than almost any other museum. And it was always a museum of, of um, art, science, literature, and, and music when it started. And so we are still connected. We're physically connected to our Natural History Museum, which makes it a very interesting dynamic throughout the building as a visitor. And um, so the Carnegie International, though, is the oldest ongoing uh, exhibition of contemporary art in North America and second oldest in the world, only second to the Venice Biennale. Okay. And so as we come into this year, this September, we will launch another Carnegie International. And we've always been uh, kind of a museum of contemporary art because we've always shown the art of the moment through Carnegie Internationals. And then the collection has, has been built 
through purchase from those Carnegie internationals. So it's a, okay. it's a very kind of interesting way of, of creating a collection, um, but which gives us many, many pathways into talking about works of art with people um, for whom talking about works of art might not be their first level of comfort. <laughs> sure. Yeah. How big is the building since it's connected to the history? It's, it's very big. <laughs> I can, let's see, I can maybe tell you the number of steps from end to end, but wow. it, um, it's massive. So we're connected to natural history. We still have, you know, music hall uh, connected to it. The library is, is also connected to the building. So it's a, it's a massive structure here it is big. in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Another course that you guys are offering for the Mindful Museum is also the crash course on art history classes. And that the dates vary by month, but that's from 1130 to 1 p.m. And that's also on site. But then and we'll get to this in a little bit, but you also have access to the online recordings as well. Yes. So the crash courses, which I've been running for a number of years, um, so you can attend it on site or you can attend it from your home. It'll be simultaneously on Zoom and in our theater. So whatever your comfort level is. And then I have recordings um, since the shutdown, since COVID started, I started running meditation and chair yoga classes online, oh. as well as individual uh, short meditations that are connected to the art paths. So we actually started those during, you know, when, when we were closed. Um, so there's an incredible bank literally called the bank of recordings of uh, meditations, again, inspired by works of art, chair yoga inspired by works of art. And part of the membership to this is that you have access to all of those. So it's, and, and we're going to continue to record them. They will no longer be, right now anyway, they will no longer be live online. So okay. we were doing them live online um, and then sending out the recording afterwards to people who have registered. So there are more than 66 meditation classes, half hour meditation classes and 40 some uh, chair, half hour chair yoga classes that you can do in your home. And, we'll, and, and then all of the crash courses that I've run over the past few years. And uh, we, like I said, we will continue to record them every month and keep propagating the bank, um, but they won't be live currently. Now, the, and you've kind of already touched on it, but the bank, you guys call it the bank, it's access to, on, to all of the online recordings, even though that this initial inaugural Mindful Museum program is from May to December, after December, people can still access all the recordings. I just wanna make that distinction. So even though the program stops in December, they can still continue taking advantage and accessing all of the recordings for all of the uh, yoga and all of the programs that you guys were offering, which I think is wonderful. You know, um, I want to touch on the uh, registration. So for um, members of the Carnegie Museum of Pittsburgh, it's a $50 membership. And then for non-members, and if they want to learn more about the membership, we're going to have links right to the membership page to the museum. Um, it's an $80 membership fee, correct? For registration fee. Um, you're also offering uh, scholarships. Did you want to talk about the scholarships and what that entails? Yeah, we, we never want uh, the ability to pay a fee to be a barrier to visit. So we have scholarships for people to be able to attend. And that's not a problem, um, either online or, or on site. And then it's, you know, the for someone who is a museum member, it's the $50 and that's the whole eight months of programming or $80. But then we also have a senior membership where you can become a member for $50 as well. And that gets you all the other membership uh, perks, um, Carnegie Magazine and, and other member things that we do and, and entrance into the museum for free at any time. Well, and it also, the museum's providing all of the art supplies you're providing, and like you said, you're giving them a replica or a duplication or a, a, a print of the yoga exercise, the piece that inspired that exercise class that day. So 
I mean, they're getting supplies and materials as well as access to all of these wonderful resources that the museum is putting together. And, you know, they're getting a wonderful education and also physical exercise. And, and that was what I trusted would happen. That was the plan, uh, was to have these things coalesce and come together for people in an environment where, one, you don't feel rushed to go through and see a museum all in one time. You know, right. you can come back week after week. And there was a gentleman that, that has come the first two weeks and he said, I just, I just love sitting here just looking at this painting. And he was listening over and over again to the short meditation, you know, that goes along with it. And he said, I, I've never looked at art like this before, <laughs> which is wonderful. That's and, great. And that's yeah. exactly it. And his, um, I, I talked to a gentleman whose wife had recently passed and he said, you know, my wife would have loved this. So he's kind of coming for himself, but I think he's also coming for her as well. Sure. And thinking about that and being able to spend time and be mindful in, in the museum, which is just why it's called that. Right. <laughs> um, and just have the museum be the place where you feel comfortable. Uh, I always say the museum is the place where I learn to draw. It's the place where I learn to be the person that I am. And I want people to embrace that statement. You know, the museum is the place where I fill in the blank, whatever your blank is, right. where I go to be me, where I go to meet people, where I go to walk around, where I go to draw, where I go to take chair yoga, where I, you know, do all of this. So this is, um, uh, by far what I am uh, extremely charged up about. Uh, with and as you should be. I, I think it's truly just a remarkable, remarkable program, Lucy. And also this, the membership and registration also gives them access, I'm assuming, to the museum on days when there's not a Wednesday. So they could come any day with the membership as well as get all these wonderful benefits and resources that you've put together for the community and really for internationally. And, and that's what our, you know, what a museum should be doing. We're a community resource. Right. We are here for people. Um, we don't exist without people in our galleries. And um, I feel very strongly, as I said, about um, art as, as the catalyst for many, many things. And I uh, love sharing that with people. And I hope that people get that out of it as well. I trust that they will. And we have people who have never come here before, which I think is really interesting um, because they're seeing the museum in a fresh new light and which is very exciting because we will be learning from everybody as we go through this pilot year, learning from everyone. Um, what is, what is their favorite thing? What is their least favorite thing? What do they wish would happen? And we will make changes going forward. I was going to say, and I'm sure this will be a program that will continue evolving as you get that feedback from the community. And you may see things that you would like to add or change or modify. And I can just imagine the, the growth that you'll see year to year with this amazing program. And that is exactly what, what we want. Uh, we want to be able to serve the community in the way that they would like to be served. And that is that is the plan. <laughs> that is my plan and, and my hope. And uh, because we're here for everybody, we're absolutely here for everybody. Um, so I'm, I'm very charged up about it. Well, we're, we're excited to speak with you today. I have to ask you, Lucy, spending 20 plus years, 27 years, I believe you said at the museum, what, what is your personal favorite part of the museum? If you had to pick just one, just one object or a place. So um, if you had one, if we gave you a pass to go to the museum and it could be anything and you had two hours, where would you spend those two hours at? So we have this incredible room called the Hall of Architecture. And it's one of the last remaining intact architectural cast collections in the world. Wow. There's only three collections like this still in existence and two of them are overseas and as a kid um i spent a lot of time in there it's where the classes would meet before they dispersed and we have the largest architectural cast in the world 
which is the facade of the church of Saint-Gilles located in the south of France. Wow. So this is massive and we'll, we'll, we'll share a picture of it with you. And when I was a kid, um, because these were plaster, they weren't original works of art at the time or regarded as such. They are now. We regard them a little bit differently. You could sit on the steps of that cast and eat your lunch. <laughs> and so I did. And ever since then, it has just remained my favorite object. I'm actually leading the first crash course at the end of this month, just a one session on that work. And uh, I've just spent a lot of time with it. I've done a lot of research on it and how it arrived here. The room was basically built to house the collection, to house that cast. Um, and it was part of the 1907 building edition because pretty quickly after uh, the international started happening, you know, the Carnegie outgrew the first building really fast. And then Andrew Carnegie added another big building onto the first big building. And so it's in the, it's in the older building. Wow. I mean, just, I'm getting a visual of that. And I, I just, you know, there's several ways you could look at that one. It, it must just be almost um, a goosebump moment for you. Anytime you walk past that thinking as a child, you were sitting there eating and now you're helping to share the information and the appreciation for that remarkable piece of art and you get to see it every day. You know, that's just, that's just fascinating. You know, I'd shared with you, um, my, my kids just have a great appreciation for art. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy for that because I believe art is an important part of, you know, developing and, you know, maturing and just having an appreciation for things around you. <clears throat> and then, you know, you're sharing this with, just everyone and they have the ability now to, you know, have access to these online recordings for the yoga. And, you know, I just, I just applaud you and commend you for just a tremendous commitment to one sharing the arts, but also for focusing on, you know, the population of people 55 and older to not only give them an appreciation for the art, but also to help them improve and maintain their health. You know, it does all go hand in hand. I mean, the history of medicine, was really built a lot around art, you know, going back to Da Vinci, you know, and um, I just think this is a remarkable program and we're excited to share it with our viewers and listeners and hope people will take advantage of this. We're going to have access to, um, to the museum with all of the links, the registration link, as well as um, your, uh, the phone number, if people wanted to call and anything we can do to help support this program, we're happy to do it. That's wonderful. I very much appreciate that. And I would love to share this with everybody and, and, you know, if, 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 or people who might visit their, their own museum, there are things for, for people to do. As I said, there are many museums across the country who, um, who, who have incredible programming for seniors and, and then also too for health and, and healing. Uh, for instance, the um, Montreal Museum of Fine Arts um, had a program that doctors could write prescriptions for museum visits. Oh, wow. Interesting. So if you think about that, right. you know, for people who might have other challenges, might have other health challenges. Um, and so the, the museum is, is a wonderful place to be able to, to share and to be oneself. I truly believe that. Well, in the work you guys are doing at Carnegie Museum of Art, you know, one can't help to wonder the next Lucy that might be coming in on a field trip, who's going to end up working there for the next 20 plus years. You know, I, it's, it's so impactful. It's so important. And, you know, just the resources and the appreciation of the collections that you guys offer, I really hope people will take advantage of it. I hope so too. And I, I trust that they will and they, and they already are. And to have the components, I feel is kind of a holistic approach. That's the way that I've approached it through the making, through drawing, there'll be other making opportunities as well. So everyone learns differently. Some people, you know, learn by reading and some people are very tactile. I'm a very tactile person. I come from a studio background. And so being able to touch materials mm -hmm. is really important. 
and, um, and movement, obviously through the art paths and through chair yoga, and then the socialization that is already happening, uh, for people who, who come and, and they've come by themselves and now they've met some people or they have brought a couple of friends and they're spending the day together. And so I'm very supportive of that. And, uh, I realized too, over COVID, cause I started running in the moment online, um, to reach people in their homes, uh, particularly people who are caring for a loved one at right. home by themselves. It's been a very difficult moment, as you and, and all of your listeners know, and to kind of provide that moment for people and their care partner, whoever that is, to come together online and, and have that moment online as well. Um, and so that's why the online components of this were, I felt equally as important. And I think are equally as important going forward because not everybody can visit on site exactly, or are comfortable visiting on site. And there are challenges around that. So, so I think the, the wonderful thing that has happened is that we've learned this and I think it will continue to be offerings going forward with equal importance. And I'm thinking about the, you know, the crash course in art history and also the, um, the drawing class, you know, those, those are offerings that you could easily, I would think also offer in the online access to the bank. You know, I'm thinking about a uh, film director that we, um, had the pleasure of interviewing a while back. Her father had developed dementia and throughout his dementia, he became a prolific painter to the point where, and I think I shared this with you previously, where she actually went to one of their local museums and they did an art gallery exhibit of all of his paintings that he painted through his journey with dementia. And I mean, these paintings were just exquisite. Have you ever experienced that or do you have any insight on that at all? I, I think what's interesting, and this comes from um, a man by the name of Dr. John Zeisel, who is head of the I'm Still Here Foundation. His mother, Ava Zeisel, was a designer. And many of you out there probably have, uh, you know, glassware designed by her and that. And so he, in, in, in very late in her life, she had kind of dementia. And when he would talk with her about art in particular, it was unlocking things for her that had not been unlocked for a long time. So the quote from him, if I could paraphrase, is, you know, art, your memories are locked into like the glove box and art is the key that unlocks them. Okay. Yeah. So around those discussions. So I'm not surprised that this gentleman would have had um, kind of this other way of viewing the world through art, because I do think that that, that that certainly happens for a number of people. So his ability to express himself, the, the expressions are still there. Right. The memories are still there. The desire to express oneself is still there. It's just how do we, Access. provide yes the absolutely access to be able to have that expression we had a gentleman on an in the moment tour who had been nonverbal for at least a year and he came with a facility and his daughter came along with him and she even said you know he's nonverbal and it's fine because within those um, situations there are clues, though, when people have a reaction, and it could be through through the eyes, um, through movement in the body. So we acknowledge every person and every person by name, and um, to understand their reaction to what to what we're talking about, we take the definitely take the time to do that. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> he just said, "I don't like that work of art," <laughs> which was. Fantastic. Yes. It was a visceral reaction to what he was talking about that unlocked his ability in that moment to say something. And that was a beautiful moment. She yes. was shocked. You know, everybody was shocked. Um, and, and it was, it was so wonderful because then he, you know, he started to respond and we hear a lot of that after those tours 
of the way that people have responded or their kind of, you know, level of retention or sharing. Um, we've had people who have arrived um, agitated, you know, cause that's sometimes what happens with Alzheimer's. And once they're in the galleries and looking at works of art, the agitation has gone away. And I think again, it's just a powerful testimony and testament to the benefit of art and the work that you guys are doing. It, you know, it's it's truly remarkable. It's giving them almost purpose. Yeah, you and know. giving purpose is very very important. Yes, absolutely. Well, Lucy, I I can't thank you enough for your time today. I know I know you're very busy and you're doing wonderful work at uh, the Carnegie Institute of Art and the Mindful Museum Program. We're excited to share this information with you. And I, I do hope to speak with you again to learn more about how it's developing and evolving and the just the tremendous work that you guys are all doing there. And again, I, I applaud you for this truly, truly wonderful, wonderful program that you've developed for, for seniors 55 and older. I, I really appreciate that. And, and I would love to follow up with you after this first year and we can talk Yeah, please about- do about what we've learned and, and how we've made adjustments and, and to be supportive. Well, and maybe next time we'll come and um, we'll film there at the museum. Oh, that'd be wonderful. You're welcome yeah. anytime. I, I, I'm excited to see it. It just, it sounds truly amazing. And, you know, we have wonderful museums here, but um, I don't know that we would have something comparable to that hall of architecture. And that, that, that sounds exciting to see. It's, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> I have to say it's, it's a very good space. And, uh, and um, yeah, I mean, every museum has amazing, amazing things to discover. Yes. And I, I'm really, I encourage people to visit your museum. Don't feel like you need to run through it. Take some time with some works of art that captivate you. And that's what I would say is just, it's just, Go and be mindful in your space. (laughs) Well, thank you again, Lucy. And I I wish you guys nothing but success with the program. And we'll look forward to hearing more about it in the future. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lucy. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here to help families as they navigate these long-term care issues. We invite you to visit us at allhomecarematters.com, where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you have questions, every form is read and responded to. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms or watch the show on our official YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We'd also like to extend our appreciation to Lucy Stewart from the Carnegie Museum of Art in Pittsburgh for stopping by the show to share the new program they're offering called Mindful Museum. Thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you next time here at All Home Care Matters. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.